Hi there, and welcome to Ian's Engage channel. I'm Ian. In a previous video, I showed how I was going to install micro servo motors in order to switch points on Shelfington. In this video, I'm going to share my thoughts on the hardware I'm thinking about using to control the servos. Before I begin, please bear in mind that I've been looking at these for at least the past 18 months, so I thought I'd share my thought process in chronological order for completeness. When I initially began to think about controlling points, I was very much invested in the DigiKeys ecosystem of products. It made sense to me to go down this route after purchasing their DR5000 command station. DigiKeys offered accessory decoders for controlling solenoid and servo motors that were reasonably priced and could control multiple accessories at a time. So once I'd finally decided to use servo motors to switch my points, I picked up one of their DR4024 accessory decoders, which is capable of controlling four servo motors. Alongside each servo motor output, there's also a switching output for each servo, which can be used for controlling a panel LED, for example. Additionally, by adding a DR4102 points crossing interface, the switching output can also be used to change the frog polarity of a point. However, at the time, I designed Shelfington using code 80 insole frog points, so I had no need to control the frog polarity, so didn't bother purchasing any. Unfortunately, having now decided to go with code 55 unifrog points, this could be a problem. This is because, as you're probably aware, DigiKeys is no longer trading, so neither of these units are currently available unless you come across them second hand. While I could still use the DR4024 somewhere, unless I can find a replacement for the points crossing interface, I won't be able to change the frog polarity. This means that I would probably only consider using it for controlling points in a situation where only larger locos with more pickups would be circulating such as one of the main loops, where a dead frog would be less of an issue. With the demise of DigiKeys, I had hoped that Yamork would have produced a similar servo accessory decoder, but as of yet, one hasn't materialised. At the same time I was looking at the DigiKeys controller, the Megapoint servo controller began to pique my interest. The Megapoint system is a modular system where each servo controller can control 12 servos. There are many different parts to the complete system, which include panels, DCC modules, frog and relay driver modules, switches, power supplies, and the servo controller itself, which can all be configured in many different combinations. I wanted to do things as simply as possible, and after a quick email exchange with Dave at Megapoints Controllers, he suggested a list of parts I'd need to get things up and running. So what I have here is the servo controller board, a DCC module so I can control the servo movement using DCC commands, a pop-on configuration switch that connects to all of the switches on the servo controller board, allowing temporary control, a remote setup button set, which mimics the buttons on the server controller board and allows the controller to be set up remotely, and a 12 volt 8 amp power supply capable of powering it all. Again, because I ordered these while Shelfington was still being planned to be constructed using insole frog points, there was no need to think about how I was going to power the frog. The good news is that a frog driver module exists which can be used alongside the servo controller board to switch the frog polarity. The bad news is that this is not a cheap system. As with the DigiKeys accessory controller, I still intend to use the Megapoint servo controller somewhere on the layout, probably where there are a high density of points as the unit can handle 12 servo motors. Since purchasing this kit, Megapoint's controllers have released their new control system called System 2. The new system seems to have even better integration with additional support for GMRI, RFID detection and block detection with each module being configurable via Wi-Fi. System 2 was the system used by Pete Waterman and the Railnuts team on their making tracks layout and is probably the gold standard in what can be achieved in control systems at this point in time. At some point, while I was investigating servo controllers, I stumbled across Arduinos. For those who don't know, an Arduino is basically a tiny computer, 
It can monitor things from the world around it using sensors, like buttons, infrared sensors and current sensors. Then, based on what it has sensed, it follows a simple program to perform actions, such as turning on a light, activating a sound or moving a motor. I have to say that the thought of using Arduinos immediately appealed to me. I could see lots of possibilities, like playing ambient sounds as someone stood in a particular area around the layout, or changing signals as a loco approached, or automatically turning lights on around the layout when it got dark. And yes, operating a servo motor to switch a point. The prospect of using one or more Arduinos for controlling things around the layout was quite exciting, especially as they offer a cost-effective way of doing this, but there is a lot to learn. The good news is that there's a web-based simulator that can be used to help you design circuits and test your code. As an example, here I've set up a simple test to control a servo using a push button. You can easily edit the code and immediately see how it changes the operation of the hardware. While I really like the idea of using an Arduino, it would be a huge DIY project, requiring me to find solutions for lots of things, such as controlling multiple servos, switching the frog polarity of the points, and responding to DCC commands. And while I don't foresee any problems with the coding side of things, I definitely struggle with some of the electronics involved. However, while performing research on how to capture DCC commands on an Arduino, I came across the Arcomora DCC Next system. Arcomora is a shorthand for Arduino Controlled Model Railway, and the company has a range of Arduino based hardware as well as software libraries for controlling the devices. I've purchased their DCC Next system, which is capable of controlling up to 16 servos via DCC commands. The device can be connected to a PC via the USB port and the setup software is used to configure how the servos respond when commanded to move. By sacrificing the number of servos controlled, their output ports can be reconfigured to switch the frog polarity of an associated point via a relay. Because the device is Arduino based, it's also possible to add your own code or modify the existing code to suit your needs. It was the perfect Arduino based solution in many respects. I was all set to settle on the DCC Next system as my server control hardware, when I began to think about automation. Although I've always said I wanted to eventually automate train movements on Shelfington, I hadn't really thought too much about how I was actually going to achieve this, other than to think about block detection. However, what I did know was that it would be necessary for the controlling software not only to switch the points, but also to be able to determine their position. I was confident enough that I'd be able to write code to allow the Arduino to figure this out, but I wasn't sure how my code would be accessible by third-party applications, such as iTrain or GMRI. So, with automation in mind, I've recently been looking at the ESU Switch Pilot 3 servo controller. This device is capable of controlling eight servos, but what caught my eye is that it's Railcom compatible. This means that it can be interrogated to find out the position of each servo, which will be key for implementing train automation in the future. For frog polarity switching, an ESU switch pilot extension box is required. Each extension box can switch four frogs at a time, so two boxes are required if the points controlled by all eight servos require polarity switching. This makes the system fairly expensive, but you do get a lot of functionality for your money. I'm now pretty confident that this is the system I'll be using to switch points on Shelfington, where automation will be implemented, which at the moment is everywhere except the marshalling yard and the goods yard sidings. OK, so that's about it for this update. As you can see, I've pretty much gone down the rabbit hole of how to control servo motors. Interestingly, after discovering Arduinos, I was absolutely certain that I'd be using them to control my servo motors, so I'm glad I explored other possibilities, 
as the switch pilots weren't even on my radar until a week or so ago. I'll certainly be using the other devices elsewhere on the layout though, and still have big plans for using the Arduinos. Anyway, I hope my ramblings haven't bored you too much, and may even have been helpful to some. If you use servo motors, please let me know how you control them, and whether you're happy with your solution. Do you use any of the methods I've discussed? If so, are they any good? And if not, what problems have you encountered? Alternatively, if you've got any hints, tips, useful tools or techniques to pass on to a beginner in Engage modelling, or if you simply want to say hello, then please do so in the comment section. Anything and everything you've got to say will be greatly appreciated. In the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching. Hopefully I'll have another update on my progress soon. Bye.